Hello everyone, Cessner here. Today, we stream on twitch.tv slash Cessner. Today, we learned about basic Unity and Essentials, got to play around with 3D models, and made a basic 2D pachinko game in the end. Before we get started, make sure to hit like and subscribe, and follow me on twitch.tv slash Cessner. Now, let's jump into it. Hello everyone, this is the first day of my stream. So basically what we are going to learn today is we are going to learn about Unity Basics and Essentials. I absolutely have no idea about Unity so we are going to learn everything about it. Just have to go to learn.unity.com. They have a lot of guides and tutorials for beginners and all you have to do once you're on the website is go to pathways and click on Unity Essentials. So let's just resume and do this. So for this part of the stream, we basically just read and skimmed through everything. We just read about system requirements for Unity, different plans like student and professional plans. For just learning, make sure to use student or personal plan. And lastly, we read about installing Unity, but since I have already installed, I basically just skipped through that part. But for you guys, make sure to follow the installation properly. After installing Unity, you are asked to explore a micro game. A micro game is essentially a pre-made game in Unity where you can edit and explore. Open up your Unity Hub, click the Learn tab, choose a micro game you want. For my case, I click on Carding Game and open the project. It may take a while for Unity to extract the packages for your micro game. So while waiting, I decided to just read through the tutorial. Okay, I think it's it's almost done. Get started with Unity and just click get started. So let's start here. Play test. So in this first tutorial, you will start by playing in the carding game. After you will learn how to make your first modification in Unity, just click start to begin. Before you modify your game and play it. So the play button here actually plays the game. this the volume okay. so the game is controllable with WASD or uh, arrow keys W for acceleration A and D for moving left and right so we're just asked to play the game nothing is crazy just basic stuff and play again it will pause the game and now we were asked to look at this so this is the hierarchy window. The hierarchy window contains the list of game objects added to your game. Alright, just click next to continue. Click on hierarchy window, so we're asked to click on our player. I click on it, yeah. Then we are next. So once you click on that, the inspector window pops up. And all the data and stats that your character has will appear here. Like the mass, the drag, angular drag, position, click next. So base stats. So on this base stat, you can see different settings for your character, especially movement settings. So if, if I make this 100, what will happen? So it's asking me to do play mode. Oops. Let me just play this. Oh yeah, it definitely, it definitely went really fast. What if let's change it in game while the game is loading? Oh, I can. So if I click this 500, yeah. Oh, that's nice. So you don't have to pause the game. You can change the settings of your character immediately, and you can see the results almost immediately. Yeah. So. We will do next of the interactive tutorial. We will switch over to the editor UI. Uh, do you want to save the changes? No, don't save. So in this tutorial, you'll learn more about the Unity editor, which will be super helpful as you modify your game. Click start below to begin. All right. The scene view is your interactive view where you can find all types of game objects. Selecting and modifying game objects in the scene view is one of the first skills you must learn to begin so, working in Unity. So try the hand. So the hand tool makes you pan around the scene. Oh, okay. Okay. Orbit tool. 
hold down out so holding down out makes me move the camera angle moving the scroll wheel zooms in and zooms out the view project window so the project window displays all of the assets assets are the files that makes up your project for example 3d models all our characters the textures the environment the audio files so basically everything that you put into the game that's what assets are and you can find it on the project window on the bottom part of your unity window oh that's it all right so let's move on to the next tutorial we just added colors so select the card this is the card that we have right now frame the card with your mouse cursor over the scene view press f on your keyboard so select card button in the inspector window you will see a color box this is it that is a color box so if i make this screen red i like red but for now we'll try to use dark green now the cart body is green so enter play mode yeah as you can see the cart is already green all right so add a job a prefab is a game object that has components and properties and is stored as an asset oh so these are my prefab so jump ramp so these are called pre prefabs then oh it's like a move to i'm pretty oh what what the, what the hell happened so if i click the move tool so i have to drag the arrows okay let's move it to there okay how can i rotate it okay so i have to drag this oh this is the x so I, ha I want to retain it in the X axis, right? How do I... Do I have quick... Oh, okay. <laughs> so I have to click the Y axis. Then. Okay, basically that's my RAM. Test your jump, okay. Try to then share. Don't... Uh, let's save it. We're about to build your project into an actual game that your friends and family can play. Oh, so basically we are going to publish the game. Open the build setting window. File. File build settings. Okay. Click the build button. To get your game working on the web. Oh, so it's going to be a web game. You need to set your build platform to WebGL. Setting your platform tells Unity how to build your project so it works where people will play it. Select WebGL in the platform listing. Click switch platform. Okay. So you click WebGL and switch platform. Alright. So once it's done packaging or compressing, then you can just press build. Save it. Select folder. Build. Oh, I have to select a folder? Oh, wait. I should read. Click on the build and create a folder where you want to save your game. Okay, let's create a folder. Uh, heart game. So that folder. Yeah, it's building now. Building the carding game that we made took a long time, so I just talked about Bolt, the visual scripting tool for Unity. It was made free last 4th of May this year, and those who purchased it before got a refund. So I was saying that it was the perfect time to study game development if you don't want to do any coding just by using Bolt. You can get Bolt for free in the Unity Asset Store. I finish. Well, maybe that while that's loading, maybe we can save this exercise for later. Explore the submissions. Smart stuff. Oh, it's done. And cart game. Window. Open. Share web geo. Where can I find it? Window. Oh, okay. The capital G. Two thousand years later. Okay, it's yeah. Okay, so I can put my link here now. Wait, what? So I made a very huge mistake here. Just remove the word edit from the link you are given and it will be good to use. I wasted a lot of time so I will just skip to the point where I realized what I did wrong. 
Unity. But I have that, right? Play.unity.com. Yeah, this. Yeah, if I go here. Oh, what the f? <laughs> I did this a while ago and it didn't let me do it. I guess I'm done with it. Oh, I'm already done. Nice. See next mission. Okay, we are moving on to a different a different series now. We are going to fast forward through the tutorials. The first part of the tutorial asked us why we want to learn Unity and what we want to create. To answer those questions, I want to learn Unity because I want to be a game developer and I want to create games. What we are planning to ultimately create is a 3D open world anime MMORPG that I've always dreamed of. We'll also learn that there are different industries we use as Unity such as the following. Games, engineering, automotives, and even transportation. In this part of the tutorial, we were just asked to create our 3D scene and make 3D objects. So we are going to just fast forward through this. Uh, new, new project. Create 3D because we're trying to create a simple 3D object. Name it whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to name it 3D object. Okay. Create and wait for Unity to initialize and extract the packages and all. Yeah, so we have it here. And let's make a cube. 3D object and let's make a cube. We have here a nice cube. Let's focus on it by pressing F. Okay, go to the cube and press here. You can see it in real time. It actually changes. I change this to 3 and press F so I can focus on it. It becomes easier to move around it. Right click the cube here and let's create a sphere. Let's move it around. Oh, so the sphere that you're going to create is going to be as big. Can you see? It? As big as the object you have here. Okay, so if I move here, can I move both of them? Oh, okay. If I click this, but if I click this, it will only move the sphere. Okay, that's good to know. To remove the sphere, you just have to drag it up here. So when you click cube now, you won't move the sphere anymore. They will move individually unless you select both of them by clicking and shift clicking. You can move them both now. But I wanted to be a child of this, so I have just have to drag it on its name again. Then I can start moving it. Nice. Oh, so Q is for pen. W is for move. Press E for rotate. Click the object you want to rotate. Then just drag and move this. Yep. Then R is for scale. So if you want to make this a bigger, like that. If you want to make it wider, like that. That's nice to have. Let's see the rec tool. Oh, it's like the scale tool, but it's, it's more precise. You can move it on the different quadrants and change the shape of it. It's nice. Because the scale tool only scales it up on X, Y, and Z. Rec tool, you just T. I want you to get the vertices and move it around to change the shape of the object. So if you press Y, you get the transform tool. And it basically does is orbit... Uh, rotate and move combined you can move it using these arrows and you can rotate it using the circles there let's delete this and create empty okay so if i if i have sphere here and if i have a cube i can join these two inside a game object let's move this the cube first can join the two in this game object so I don't have to click them separately see I can move them around with them being the same 
child of the game object unlike what we did before where we put the cube inside the sphere so when you click the sphere you can also click the the cube but in this time they are both childs of the same parent which is the game object and I click this first so you can rename stuff in the inspector monument all right we set the position by selecting the three dots on the right this one oh okay so it's back to the origin of the world okay we're going to create the 3d object and cube inside of it and we are going to name it floor okay what we are going to duplicate it so how many floors do you need eight four five six seven and this is the eighth one so 20 0 0.2 and 20 becomes this huge floor so it's 20 units wide 20 minutes long and two minute 2.2 units thick the floor one will change it to 8.2 and 18 it becomes another floor okay but I have to move the y-axis to 0 0.2 oh so we're basically making a pyramid I think I, I get what she's doing now so every floor is 0 0.2 units of height and we're just decreasing the length and width by 2 and this one's going to 0 0.2 0 0.4 right yeah, so basically that's what you do 14 I think 14 and now it is 0 0.6 because it's the third one yeah so we basically just continue it until the seventh floor so 12 0 0.2 and 12 then this is the fourth one so 0 0.2 uh, 2 times 4 is 0 0.8 move it and it is 1.0 this is how much is 4 12 this is 10 0 0.2 and 10 let's continue doing it until games are in object 7 1.2 this is 0 0.8 this is 42 and this is oh 8 not 0 0.8 8 and this is the 1.41 6 0 0.2 and 6 all right looks looks amazing to be honest I made it so we're now going to create walls so it's just another cube just another cube with we're going to transform it to 0 0.2 10 and 10 this is the thickness thickness of 10 oh thickness of 10 and length of 10 and we'll name this wall and apparently he moves it on negative 6.5 and 5 so it became a wall there and negative 6.5 here as well on the z-axis so it basically became a wall here all right now what's what to do next duplicate the wall three times you will have the same value just different rotations okay, one two three so the same scale value change the position to this to positive and positive 6.5 then rotate it 45 degrees did he rotate oh did he rotate the first one to 45 degrees then for wall two he basically just made this positive for it to be on the other corner then this one he made it the z-axis positive then wait mine did little oh because it should be pointing inwards it should be pointing inwards and there we go we have the same thing now Create the roof. Create a new game object as a child of the monument game object. And name it platform. Oh. 
so I'll create an object is it a cube a game object another placeholder and name it platform and inspector so what he basically did is put the floors on the platform so it becomes one unit on a parent named platform and whenever you click platform you click all the units so basically if you have a lots of game objects like for example i have here eight floors and i want it to move separately at the single click of a button instead of click here and click shift on this shift clicking on this i'd rather have it on an empty object put it inside an empty object so when i click that empty object all of the pl uh, platforms will be clicked will be selected duplicate the platform game object will include duplicate child object your name this copy to roof so he wants me to duplicate this and rename this the roof okay and use the move and rotate tools to put the roof onto the structure okay so move it here then it's 10 right and rotate it negative 180 oops negative 180 wait ha what happened when i rotated it doesn't seem to do it as i want it to do so basically 180 degrees and this is 10 and this is zero and there we have a nice looking roof add components to the 3d game object create a sphere create object a sphere and you move it oh, oops make sure you have the move tool yeah yeah Right, position the main camera and every there's a camera like the one shown below. When you see the outlines of a pyramid line shape called the prism, which shows what part anything outside the prism. Okay, when the camera is selected, you can expand the camera component in the inspector to open a camera preview window. Okay, so let's click the camera. There's a camera preview here, and we wanted to look at the there we go zooming in a little for, for, further yeah we have it there all right so we're now learning how to use rigid bodies make a game object to behave like a real world physical object you give it a physical property called rigid body component so you have to click your sphere here window this you click rigid body so there are two types the rigid body of rigid body and rigid body 2d so we are going to use the rigid body one the rigid body component inspector select use gravity if it is not already selected so rigid body use gravity so basically what will happen here since we have our camera looking at this should i move it a little backwards yeah looking at this you can see you should be able to see this ball move down yep that's pretty nice we're learning how to actually create our objects here so you don't really have to model it in blender if you know how to do it in unity like this you can actually make your game object by just creating i mean your monument or any other uh, type of object you want to create just by combining different basic sh shapes so materials are components that define the surface characteristics basically what the material is right now it doesn't have any material that's why it's like this so if we add a wood material to this object then it will appear like it will have wood patterns this one so if we download this oh, oops. save the image as where our unity 3d game objects add it to assets there so when we go over to unity you can see their asset here the material the big base color here so you have you want to create a material here then rename the material as brick material okay nothing fancy just 
we're naming it brick material okay click click the circle icon oh this one okay and i can change the color of it just make it white so it retains the same thing here create a new object cube oh oh he put it on the cube not on the thing i make your right click for the object cube and put it here add a material to it or add a component to it rigid body so if i want it i want this to have its material i just have to drag and drop the material here then you already have its own material see that's really cool put it inside make sure um, let's look if it tumbles down no it's this it remains as a cube that's just falling down because we added a rigid body component to it cube now displays the brick material we change the scale of the material select the cube bring it closer again and move it yeah so basically in this material you can find it on your inspector window click the arrow here and you can see tiling so if i make the tiling to two see what will happen scale the, nothing happened all right what happened right click in the materials folder in the assets window and create physics material all right once we have it select the new physic material change the bounciness to one bounciness to one okay select the cube in the inspector window select add component rigid body your box already have a box collider component box collider all right the materials are none so if i click the circle here i can use this i should rename this bounce yeah so when we click this let's try to play it let's see let's see what happens yeah that's nice see looks good maybe i should download this a different one save it there and let's see if it appears then change the material again back to this one albedo change here yep all right so one and one oh this is the tiling we was talking about oh <laughs> oh not under the map i'm sorry stupid so if i want to make this look bigger i'm smaller but i want to look it bigger 0 0.1 that looks like a really huge brick now all right cool 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 so if i play it oh i haven't added the uh, on the back box glider add a physics material here let's move it here so i can see it properly add bounce bounce has a bounciness of one let's play it the brick cube should bounce now cool adjusting the lighting directional light all right so now we get to understand how lighting works so i'll stop playing it all right change the rotation of the sunlight select the directional light so if i click the... oh okay oh so basically just lighting it's cool for learning so at this point we were already done with playing around and experimenting with 3d models so what we are going to do now is do a challenge called Pachinko Challenge, which we found in LearnUnity.com. It's basically a 2D game that only involves gravity. We need to make a 2D project. Yeah? Let's go back to Unity, add a new project, make it 2D, and name this project Pachinko Project. Alright? For 8 and wait for the assets to load so for this challenge we're going to do a sprite pachinko which is like a 2d ball game that only involves gravity so this ball will go down and go to random spots uh 
colliding with the obstacles here. So this basically it. No player movements involved. What we only need are 2D sprites which you can download on the asset store at unity.com. Just click assets, go to 2D, and click free assets. You can find different free assets here. Just download anything that applies to your game. For mine, I downloaded Sunnyland and free platform game assets. But for the Unity game, Pachinko game, I'll be using the Sunnyland one. So you go to Window, Package Manager, wait for this to load, and so you can import your assets. So click this drop down menu, click My Assets, and find whatever package you want. I want to use this Sunnyland, so I'm going to import it, but since I already imported it here, not going to click that anymore so basically what we want to use here is just two basic things first we want to create a 2d object called tile map when you create a 2d object called tile map it will create a grid and a tile map so what will happen is you go to window open 2d and create create a tile palette since my my assets here is already sliced that is already activated here in our tile palette all we have to do is click the brush button and simply paint here but the problem is our grid size is too big because our tile palette is only 16 pixels by 16 pixels so we can actually change the cell size of our of our grid and look it's it looks like that now so what we need to do now is adjust the size of the camera so it doesn't look too big. I think that looks uh, okay. Okay, so we'll make now our like ground. I just basically paint everything here with ground. Yeah, it's like just playing a game as well. There we go. So we can add sides. Well, let me click that properly. Add sides to this. This is for the bottom part. Oh, oops. There we go. Click this and this. And add this. So let's see if our camera see it that's play button yeah we can see it there properly i don't mind that thing there will not matter so now we are going to add a collision a collider on this tile map uh the collider a co Collision. Yeah, we are going to add a box collider 2D on this tile map. So we can adjust the collider by pressing edit collider, edit collider, and move the collider to just match the shape of your ground. Okay, so we can rename this the ground. Okay. And we can add now a 2D object called Sprite. The Sprite will be our Pachinko Ball. So we can find here. Let's find a proper Sprite here maybe. Something that looks circle-ish. Oh, we can go close the tile palette now. It's already done painting it. Let's look for ball-like structures. Mm -hmm. Ego FX. Oh yeah, we can use this. Oh yeah, we're going to use this as our sprite. So new sprite. Let's click a sprite and item feed. It's called item feed. And that's basically how it's gonna look. So if you want to adjust the size, you can adjust it. For me, 
I'll just make it as big as the grid size here. Yep, basically that that size. And we are going to add another collider here. But we're going to add a circle collider because it's a circle. Edit the collider so that you can put it into shape. And let's see if it works. See if it will work. It won't because we haven't added any kinematic body yet. We'll add here a body, a rigid body, I mean. Rigid body 2D because we're using 2D. And we'll use this as dynamic because it will be moving. We'll add a uh, body as well to the ground. Or, I mean, rigid body 2D to the ground and make it static so it doesn't move. Let's try this and play. Yep, they interact with each other. Now it's time to create the other ball. We'll just re we'll uh, we'll rename this to Pachinko Ball. Then we'll create another 2D object, 2D, 2D sprite called Obstacles. But we're going to be creating a lot of obstacles, so we'll create an empty object here and add obstacles inside. So this is the placeholder of all the obstacles. So we're going to add the sprite there, item feed. And we're going to use this ball now. You can use anything, any ball. So I'm just going to use the rec tool and change the size of this ball to be almost the same size of this other ball. Right? So that seems fine. And we're going to make a lot of this, but we'll add first a collider. Circle Collider, Collider, Circle Collider, edit again so that it matches the size. Then we're going to add a, a rigid body to it and make it static as well because this will be obstacles that you have to go through. So we are going to use our move tool here and we're going to make lots of it maybe 12 would be enough so we're going to add first here you can just put it on random spots that you want basically just do whatever you like i'm just going to put it like there so that it has a little bit of randomness on where it will go yeah, add this, add, doesn't have to be perfect, just do it like this and let's see if it works. Press play, there we go, so we basically created our pachinko game. That's very simple, just using gravity and that's it. Thank you for everyone who gave their love and support on both my Twitch and YouTube channel. You guys are really wonderful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon on my future videos.